Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today. There's a meteor shower this weekend, and we've got three discoveries on Jupiter, and amazing eye candy from space. But before we begin, quick note on the more than 100 people since last night's video to ask about rebuilding time after the solar disaster or their existing solar or off-grid system. No, there is no rebuild. Isolated telegraph wires still melted in the 1859 event. They unplugged the machines, they still caught on fire. There is no factory or suppliers or anybody to make replacement parts. No way to get them there. No way to build up or communicate. Observers prep for no electricity. That's the end game of this magnetic excursion on this planet. One day, the sun will just take it all away. Now, back to what we do here. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star with numerous pops that did not produce CMEs, but sure signal the sun's intentions moving forward. The active regions are getting more complex and are beginning to dominate the southern hemisphere of our star. Small X-ray events are the bright points on this darkened 131 angstrom view. It's plasma accelerated in the arching fields above the sunspots. Solar wind here, and it is calm. A trailing, slow wave in the CME stream arrived around lunch yesterday and was barely more intense than the ambient stream. KP, settling into calm, quiet green, bottom right. Folks, if you get a chance to look up this weekend, the nighttime could bring a strong showing of the Geminid shower. Some years are better than others. This one could have upwards of 100 fireballs an hour. Link to the meteorshowers.org Geminid display is in your list of links today. We are moving on to Jupiter. We begin diving into a pluming storm on the gas giant, finding a mush ball of ammonia and ice agglomerating and falling down through the cloud, heating, breaking apart, and readying to start the cycle over again. Mush ball hail on Jupiter. We have more confirmation that the interior of Jovian superstorms rotate the opposite way of the peripheral clouds. These do scream shelled current and field setups of an atmospheric electric circuit. And lastly, at Zeus, there's a tremendous lack of water vapor in the darkest brown bands near the equator. For some reason, it's an atmospheric desert there, dry as can be. Folks, you may have heard the recent news about a 27 million year extinction cycle. The short version is this. It is real, it exists, it is way, way worse than the 12,000 year excursion and potential micronova cycle which humans survive every time. And we are dead in the middle of that 27 million years, so that's a fun relief. Long way to go on the big one, even if the shorter cycle is at our doorstep. Okay folks, time for some eye candy. Most know there are gamma ray bubbles or lobes north and south of the galactic core in the Milky Way. They are often referred to as the Fermi bubbles. Well, folks, the X-ray bubbles around them have now been visualized as well. There were hints of these being visible in a few previous sky maps, but nowhere near to this extent. They are more than double the size of the gamma bubbles and, of course, form the shell around them. Hubble is celebrating with a collection of ultra-processed images, the first of which fingers the magnetic field driving cloud structures extending from and dwarfing the galaxy size itself in the center a hint at the vast scale of the electromagnetic influence. We have newly processed NOVA images that insist on imagining being there inside looking around. Some of the zoom-ins on other remnants like the Veil Nebula are where a lot of small-scale magnetic theory has progressed in terms of the filaments and gas clouds of the galaxy. Now last but not least, we have two galactic articles hinting at a similar finish line. When they begin to add magnetism into the models, and you'd be amazed how often that is neglected for ease or replaced with hydrodynamical modeling, they begin to notice that they can begin to create the small-scale clouds and filaments and interactions that we see in the galaxy. And when they scale that up to the galactic level in full, they continually show the inflows, outflows, and hint at the importance of the large-scale magnetic fields of the system. Confirmation of the paradigm here, and with that paradigm, comes the galactic current sheet running through the middle. The sheet is the trigger of the cosmic disaster, this shorter 12,000 year cycle knocking on our door once again. Yes, it won't be anywhere as bad as the 27 million year cycle and there will be plenty of humans around to tell the story, but as happens every 12,000 years, ain't everybody gonna make it. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got earth wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because there's much more to come right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.